This is Ron again from Stay Sharp. In this video we're going to be doing a sharpness evaluation and sharpening of a tough head single bevel. This is a 200 grain tough head. And right out of the box I can tell you that this is going to be a sharp head. I can see they do the material removal to get it down to 20 degrees and then they do a secondary sharpening and their website says they sharpen each one by hand and I can tell you this is a sharp edge this feels really sharp we'll follow the same protocol we'll put this under the microscope to look at the edge and then we will put it in the sharpness tester to see what the factory edge looks like then I will sharpen it So now you've seen their factory edge under the microscope. Let's look at their edge on the sharpness tester. It's probably going to do well since that edge looked great. Two oh five. That might be the the best factory edge that I've seen. That's exceeding the I think the fine cutlery range on the best scale. So. That is impressive. That is a good edge. Kudos to them. In this case, I'm going to pair this guide with the Type C sharpener, as that makes the most sense, only because of the edge angle, which is 20 degrees. That's one of the lowest I've seen and I can get down to 20 degrees with this guide. I can go from 40 all the way to 20. So in this case, I would use what comes with the kit. If it were dull, the double cut file, the ceramic crock stick, the round wooden dowel with buffing compound on it for the final step, but sharpening I would wrap it with a variety of grits of wet dry sandpaper because you can wrap that around the dowel and essentially make a round file in whatever grit you care for the head gets mounted in there and you can roll any grit along the edge as you care um, so that will be the protocol for sharpening it. I won't have to do much. As I said, this head came really sharp. I'll probably do 2,500 grit. I know I'll do a lot with the ceramic uh, crock stick and then buffing compound. I, I'll use white buffing compound on the wooden dowel. And that's the same action. Have the head mounted in the guide. Lay the stick on there and roll it back and forth across the edge. Um, so we'll go through all that and then we'll come back and talk about the edge. I do have some concerns with 20 degrees. I think there may be some edge deformation on heavy bone hits or certainly pass-throughs, but every company is different. You know, some like 20 degrees, some like 24, 25, 30, 35, some go up as high as 40. Um, but every company makes their own mark. This will certainly cause more rotation than most other heads because of that uh, degree of pressure that we can get on this side because of the long slope. There just may be an issue on a pass through when you hit dirt that there'll be a lot of edges um, to repair. But it's good steel. S7 tool steel is some great steel. So they know what they're doing there on the material. They got the material right, they've got the sharpness right. Um, let's see if we can make that edge even sharper. I'll be right back.
Alright, so I haven't been working on this head too long as there wasn't a lot to really do. I spent time with the uh, wooden dowel and the sandpaper wrapped around it. Went to the ceramic stick in this action. So I fit between the goal posts here, I roll on the roller. I drop it down to the edge, I can sweep it forward, I can sweep it backward, I can go in any manner or direction that I care about. But because this is a single bevel, you still have to worry about the back edge. And in that case, I would lay my ceramic stick, if that was the grit that I created the burr with, flat and stroke it on the back side to break off the burr. You'd have to get a burr at each grit. And we're going to mar up that nice little logo. But that's how I would break off the burr. And then I chase a little bit of that burr back to this side. So I'll give it a, a stroke or two to get rid of that. So I've kind of massaged that burr back and forth. The last step would be buffing compound on the wooden dowel that we supply in the kit. Coat it up. Now with the wooden dowel, you only want to use a pulling stroke. You would never want to cut into the dowel or scrape off the buffing compound. So I'll turn it so you can see a little bit better. I put it on the roller, I drop it down onto the blade, and I drag it. That is the process for buffing the edge. And as you can see, we're getting a really nice mirrored edge on that. So I'll keep going on that. When we get it all done, we'll put it through the sharpness tester it under the microscope and give it a look. All right, you've seen the newly sharpened edge under the microscope. Let's take a little look at it here. So this was a real challenge in this head in that it came to be incredibly sharp. Uh, they care about sharpness at tough head and it shows. It was hard to best a already sharp head. And here I put the little Altoids box in the frame because it's got some reflectivity and we're going to look at the blade edge. So I sharpened this edge. Theirs was the one with the black dot. And I was sharpening the one with the tough head logo on the opposite side. So I'm sharpening this edge. So this is the edge that I produced. And I got to tell you, it was a challenge. It took me a lot of time. Uh, beating their edge was a tough nut to crack. But that's the edge that I produced. This is what you get from the factory. And I tell you what. It is one of the best that I've seen. They really do a great job. All right, you've seen the edge under the microscope after sharpening. I didn't have to remove a lot from the backside. I was always dealing with the edge opposite the Tough Head logo. The factory edge, I put a little black dot on there so I always remembered which one I was working on. Before I test this, I'm going to say this was probably my biggest challenge because this had arrived so sharp. All right, let's see how we do. One forty-seven. That is sharper than a razor blade. How do I know? Because I have tested razor blades in this machine. As always, the last step is to check the weight. I don't expect this to change at all since I had to remove so little material. I really was essentially going from 2500 grit to buffing compound and spending a lot of time buffing that edge to see if I get it sharper. It started at 206. Let's see what it finishes at. 
Yep, 206, so it stayed the same, which I expected. So I mentioned earlier that I had concerns about the 20 degree bevel and edge rolling, and I created a video showing the different bevel angles on single bevel broadheads and the effect on the side loading. I'm going to link that video in the description below. If you're shooting a single bevel, you'll want to watch that because I go through 20 degrees, which is what this head is at, all the way up to 40 degrees, and I show the impacts on metal thickness and the side loading. So because of that, and because of my concern, and because my customers are going to ask, I'm going to now re-sharpen this same head using my 35 degree guide. What will that mean to the edge? Well, if you look, if I can line this up, it's certainly going to be steeper. But once you watch that video that I am linking below, let me try to get a little better angle here, you're going to understand why I'm doing this. So the 20 degrees that you see is very shallow and prone to damage. I'm going to put it in the 35 degree guide for two reasons. I'm going to make the edge stronger, less susceptible to roll and curl, but there may be an impact on the weight. Everybody's concerned about the weight of their heads, overly concerned. And certainly I'm going to be removing a little bit of metal for about the first 20 thousandths in from the edge. But the trade-off is a much stronger edge from side loading. So watch that other video and you'll understand what I'm doing. So I'll put it in the 35 degree guide, I'll sharpen it up, and then I'll be back. So now I've reground the head with the 35 degree guide. And you can see that secondary bevel that is on there now. What is the cost? Well, a stronger edge, right? So now we've got a 35 degree bevel and hopefully you've watched the video in the description about how bevel angle influences the yield point and the strength of a single bevel head. And we know that more metal means more strength, but what's the cost? Let's look at that next. Let's look at the weight of the head. We know it started out at 206 when we began the process of the first grind. It finished at 206 after that. But now we've taken off some additional metal to create this second bevel. What is our weight? I'm trying to get it so you can see the numbers. 204. So we've taken off a total of two grains. It's still coming in at over 200 grains. So our cost in weight is nil, right? It's essentially nothing. The next cost that you may care about is width. So this head started out at 1.18 wide. Here we are. 1.18 wide is what we started at. And now after regrinding the secondary bevel on it, we've taken a little bit out of the width. How much? Right there. We are now 1.15. So we've taken off a little bit of the width to do this second regrind. But that's not much. 1.15 wide now. We've lost a total of two grains, which is essentially nothing. <clears throat> if you worry about weight down to two grains, you're, or you're overthinking it. So don't worry about that. The width is nothing either. If you worry about weight grains, you can always add um, weight washers to the back. Ethics Archery sells them, so does Three Rivers Archery. But I think we will have a stronger edge because of it. We'll have more metal. And next we're going to set up the sharpness tester and look at the effects of a 35 degree bevel.
let's look at sharpness next now that we have put this secondary bevel on the head it's a steeper angle than the 20 degrees we had let's see how sharp we got just as sharp so don't worry about that a 35 degree bevel uh, can be incredibly sharp as well as I've just shown so it's something to think about if you're going to use a head that's got a very shallow grind in this case 20 degrees and you're worried about edge yield edge deformation chatter um, you have the opportunity to change the angle you own these heads you can paint them purple if you want you can put serrations you can grind them at 35 degrees you can do whatever you want they're your property so think about that as you um, are pondering edge sharpness and edge integrity when you shoot through an animal and a head like this is a great head it's going to shoot through animals you're going to be hitting the dirt it's when you hit the dirt that you're going to see most of your edge damage this isn't a disposable head you want to reuse it over and over and over again so consider changing the edge angle a little bit to get a little bit more strength from it i hope you learned something from that thanks for watching